Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Mercurial Superfly 5 in the brand new Dark Lightning Pack colorway. Now inside the box along with the shoes, you get a string bag here, black in color, lime green mercurial branding on the front, and blue string so all the colors match what you're going to find on the shoes themselves which I have right here. Now of course in today's video we're going to go over all of the details including the colorway, tech specs, the weight, as well as how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning more please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself there'll be a little pop-up on screen or you can click the very first link down below that'll take you to the review page on my website where you will find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We'll be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, a little pop up on screen, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. All right, to start things off, let's take a closer look at the colorway. Now, this is of course part of the Dark Lightning pack, which all the shoes in the pack have a black base to the upper. This being the Superfly does maintain the kind of half and half look as far as the colors being split on the upper, but it's done in a much more subtle way than what we've seen on previous colorways of the Superfly. So on the lateral side, you have the electric green uh, accent color, and then on the medial side, you have paramount blue as an accent color, where the stripes are a little bit thicker in blue than they are in green. But nonetheless, I think it looks really, really good. It's very subtle against the black base for the entire upper. You do maintain a translucent Nike skin covering, so all the green and blue accents that you see are within the actual flyknit material itself, which I think is very cool. Black laces, the collar itself is pretty much solid black as well, with some gray accents on both sides. You have the white detailing in the Nike swoosh as well as the ACC branding. Same thing goes for the Nike swoosh and Mercurial branding on the lateral side. Soul plate, solid black in color, and then translucent bright orange studs uh, for the bottom of the shoe. So overall, I think these look really, really good. This is probably my personal favorite general release colorway of the Superfly 5 that we've seen so far. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. When it comes to performance, the Superfly 5 is a very high-tech, very capable shoe, which I think a lot of people know at this point in time. And we're going to go over the basic tech specs that you should know in today's video. But if you do want a little bit more information or you just want to see the shoes in action, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen to my playtest video that you can go ahead and check out if you haven't seen it already. So the upper is entirely made from Flyknit a knitted material from Nike. And what they've incorporated on the Superfly is a speed rib kind of pattern or texturing to it. So you can see that within the actual colored stripes that you see across the entire upper, there is a variance in thickness to the material itself. The raised parts, which are colored, are 2.5 millimeters thick. And then the lower parts in black are one millimeter thick. So you're left with this kind of ribbed texturing going across the upper. You can see it by the side profile a little bit. It's very, very noticeable when you run your finger along the shoe, but not quite as noticeable when it comes to actual touch on the ball. You're not gonna feel the specific ribbing on the upper, but you will notice the fact that it is a fairly thin feel. It is gonna have more of a barefoot sensation, but at the same time, because of the knitted material itself, there is a very slightly padded sensation that I think just feels very, very good. It's thin, but not overly thin. Uh, not quite as thin as what you're gonna get from the Vapor 11, I guess if you're comparing it to other Mercurial models, but still going to provide what I would definitely say is a barefoot feel with a sock-like sensation as well in terms of how the shoe wraps your foot, it being entirely knitted material, being one piece as well, and just how it moves with your foot in general because of the material for the upper. So uh, you do have the Nike skin covering across the majority of the upper as well, just kind of as a protective layer and to leave it from being completely slick. Not a lot of extra grip on the ball from this particular material. You have the extra reinforcement layer going around the toe box forefoot area where the upper meets the sole plate. You also get ACC all conditions control acting as your wet control element. Not really a make or break feature though, in my opinion. Laces run through the middle as you guys can see and directly attached to that lacing system, you're gonna find uh, flywire cables. So you can see a little bit more clearly right here where it's slightly more defined in terms of the ribs themselves. And that is basically a straight line flywire cable that runs from the base of the sole around the lace hole and back down to the base of the sole again. So when you pull the laces tight, it pulls on those cables which you have positioned on either side directly attached to that lacing system. 
So you really do get this nice, secure, locked-in sensation, a lot of added structure to the upper without adding stiffness and taking away from, I guess, the natural softness and flexibility of this sock-like material. So that is a very, very effective element that you're gonna find on the Superfly 5 in regards to responsiveness. Not to mention that the shoe itself does have a nice tight fit overall, which adds to that sensation even more. Across the top of the foot, uh, you are gonna find that the, the Flyknit transitions into an elasticated material while still maintaining a seamless design. So there's no overlapping uh, materials with this particular upper. And that flows into the Dynamic Fit Collar, also elasticated. Uh, so with the collar and the mid-cut aspect of this shoe or any of the mid-cut models from Nike for that matter, there's no performance benefit to this. It's there more so for looks and it does impact the overall feel of the shoe ever so slightly. But again, there's no ankle support here. It doesn't restrict mobility in any way at all. It's not something that is going to put you at any kind of advantage versus somebody wearing a low cut shoe of any kind. So just please please keep that in mind with any of the mid cut models from Nike or any brand for that matter. There's no benefit to having a mid cut shoe. It just changes the way the shoe fits and the way the shoe looks ever so slightly. Uh, moving on to the internals of the shoe, you will find an internal plastic heel counter at the heel area. You have a smooth synthetic leather liner on the inside with some decent padding back there. Um, the heel is kind of the one aspect of the shoe that we'll take getting used to, as with most mid-cut models from Nike, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Uh, removable insole with mesh liner on top, made from a single layer of this kind of ortholite style foam, which I actually quite like. It's relatively light, but does have a decent thickness to it and a kind of a, a softer sensation underfoot than a lot of other kind of standard foam insoles. And then moving on to the sole plate, you're gonna get their Nike plate sole plate, which uses a special a vacuum forming process that allows them to make it entirely out of one single layer of material as opposed to multiple layers. So not only does this make this sole plate a little bit lighter because of the one piece design, but also it allows them to actually add shape to the base of the sole plate. So it's anatomically fitted, meaning that there are certain little dips mainly in the forefoot as well as in the heel where your foot sits ever so slightly in the sole plate. Now because it's not completely flat and your foot's not just sitting on top like it usually would, where with a flat surface, your foot has that potential to slide from side to side. With this kind of fitted anatomically shaped sole plate, you sit slightly inside of the sole plate uh, which gives you a more connected sensation and it also doesn't allow your foot to slide around on top of that sole plate base. So along with the tight fit of the upper, the structure from the flywire cables and the Nike plate sole plate, you get a very connected one-to-one -one sensation when you're running around and making quicker movements in this particular shoe. Uh, the sole plate in my opinion is probably one of the best features of this particular model in regards to how it changes the overall responsiveness. It's a really cool sensation and one that for as dramatic an impact it makes on the overall feel and performance, doesn't really take all that much getting used to. Um, as far as the stud pattern is concerned, this is of course the firm ground layout, um, which features these chevron sh uh, style shaped studs, all pretty much the exact same length, all the same size. Uh, the only difference is the way that they're angled and positioned throughout the entire foot. Um, and they've kind of decided uh, on the positioning based on their research uh, and development side of things in terms of giving you the best possible grip and bite when pushing off in pretty much any direction. And that's really the best way to sum up this particular stud pattern. It's extremely aggressive, kind of what you've come to expect from the Mercurial line. It's always been known for very aggressive bladed stud patterns. And this is arguably the most aggressive one, the best one that they've ever come out with. So for use on firm natural grass, if you're just looking for as much grip as possible, this is pretty tough to beat at the moment, a very, very good stud pattern overall. In regards to weight, the Superfly 5 is very lightweight, both in hand as well as on feet. And of course, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size 9 US. I'm gonna throw them on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at a very lightweight 6.8 ounces the equivalent of 192 grams. So again, if you're looking for that super lightweight feel on your feet, you will get that sensation from the Superfly 5. All right, so here is a look at the Superflies on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of green reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. Find a direct link to that down below in the description of this video, as well as a little pop-up on screen that'll take you right to the website. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go 
ahead and check that out. Now in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, Superfly 5 is a very tight fitting shoe as you would expect from pretty much any mercurial model. The flying upper wraps your foot very closely, really leaving no extra space on the inside of the shoe whatsoever given that you have proper sizing. But at the same time, because of the knitted material it's made out of, it does have this sock-like flexibility and comfort level that you perhaps wouldn't expect from a shoe that fits as tight as this one does. You get really good lockdown and structure from the flywire cables when you pull the laces tight. The feel from the Nike plate sole plate, like I said, it's a little bit unusual for the first 10 minutes or so, but you get used to it very quickly and immediately notice the benefit of not allowing your foot to slide on the top of the sole plate like it otherwise would on a standard sole plate construction. So that's a really good aspect of this shoe. And really the only quirk here that you're gonna have to get it used to is the fit in the heel, given that this is a mid-cut model from Nike. Most of them do have a little bit of an interesting fit in this area of the shoe. Uh, you can experience blisters, you can experience discomfort, but as long as you take your time with the break-in process, don't wear them straight into a game or straight into a free kick session, you shouldn't have too many issues in regards to breaking them in. As far as width is concerned, like I said, it is a tighter fitting shoe. So if you don't like that, stay away automatically. And as far as width is concerned, not really all that wide at all. So if you do have wide feet, this is probably not a very good option for you. You're also not gonna get very much stretch out of this upper, so please keep that in mind. But if you have worn Mercurials in the past, you kinda know what to expect width-wise from the Superfly 5. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my review of the Dark Lightning Nike Mercurial Superfly 5. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can either click the first link down below or the little eye in the corner of the screen. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $300 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.